Today's daf, Thursday daf, Samach Dawid. We're up to actually Samach Gimel on the days. We're learning about the concept, the rules of Ribas, Agenata, the fact that you can have the benefit of my money. And as a result, you're paying me more money. we are discounting it. That is called Kololo de Ribas, the rules of Ribas. So <clears throat> the mother goes off on a tangent. I'm on the Aussie Pshitim Echab. If you borrow coins from your friend, the Ashkabeg, you know, Prutus, the Ashkabeg, you find that there's more in the lot than you asked for. So, how do we interpret that? So, if it's something that's reasonable, he made an error, then that you have to return. Obviously, it's a mistake. The Elam, but if there's no possibility of an error, then the person is giving you a gift. How the world do we know whether it was an error, genuine error or not? In those days, they used to count the nominations of 10 or 5. So if the mistake is an error of 5 or 10, according to Rashi, according to, even if there's a number of 10, like 30 or 40 over and above, could be that they made a mistake. Could be they made a mistake of you know three or four times. But if the number, let's say, is a, is is five, is six, seven, eight, nine, which is not how they normally count, and it's a deliberate um it wasn't an error, it was deliberately put in there and probably a gift. What about in the case where it's not really a gift? For example, the e inish the kifu. If there's a strong person, doesn't normally give gifts. My what is it? Maybe the person stole it. And he want, he's embarrassed to tell you he stole it, this strong-minded person, but therefore he sort of absorbed it into the money. The time we learned, somebody steals from his friend, somebody steals from his friend, and then he put the money in, part of the calculation, but if he's a person that comes, uh, a person, a stranger you never met before, how else can we interpret if it's not an error? Who cares what the nomination is? No, there's another possibility. To like shock you, but even though you never dealt with him before, my what's it then? Then I'm like, tell me, in the shachrin you got him. Maybe somebody else stole it. But I'm like, and he told that person, ki yazir plain if she to me not. If this person ever comes by to you and wants to borrow money, avalei becheshman. Mind you, just add a little bit more in the cheshman so I can pay off without embarrassing myself. I once sat in Yeshiva, the end of the Shira. I once came to the end of the Shira, the Shaman. I heard the comment. He said, Keddy, Keddy. I heard him say, Gurd, Gurd, like pumpkin, pumpkin. Like dynamite comment. I had no idea what he was talking about. So, Boss of the Kamrav, after Rav left the Shira, Amla said to him, My Keddy, Keddy, the Kamrav, what are we referring to here? Amla told me, Hachi Amra, this is what the Rav said. If you remember, we learned before about prepaying for something. If you prepay for something, is is a problem of rebus that you gave that person access to the money, and and as a result of that, you're getting a, a, a discount at the end. It's because you gave him money, you're paying less. So that is pure ribus. Well, what happens if it increases the item increases in value as a result, and you when you time you buy it, it's worth more than what you get it than what you paid for. It looks like ribus. But if we said if the item was available in your stock at the time, then it's as if he could have given you right then and there. If that item was available by the by the borrower, could have given you right there, who happened to be the vendor. Then, even though he didn't give it, he held on to it as if he's holding it for you, and any increase in it is yours. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Rav says here the same thing. On the Hoch Gomorrah, I'm on the Yav Zuzi Ligino. If you give money to a gardener, and Ikre Akari, you want to buy goods, because they are sort of Kari B'nei Zarsa. You paid, the amount that you paid should cover 10 goods the size of a half an am. The Amale, the guy, the vendor said, who now is the borrower because he's holding on to the money and he owes you something in return. I'm going to give you gourds that are much larger than that, double the size, the size of an Amma, which obviously is worth more as well. So Isnu, if they if they had in stock right now those the size of an Amma, that should be permitted. Less than if he did not have the size of an Amma, they're also forbidden. Second one of Shit, isn't that obvious? You must know. That's the whole rule we learned before, as we just mentioned earlier. No, here is different. You know why it's different? Normally, it's the price volatility. So today, who said it'll go up in price? Who said it won't go up in price? Here is this very same gourd that we're talking about will in- increase to the size of an amma. So maybe it's as if it's already here because this is the same item that's going to grow. Keep, keep, keep the curve, and there's no intervention that has to be on your part. It happens by itself. Then shapid dummy, it's good enough. Kamash Rulan. It comes to teach you that no, it's presently it's not here, and therefore it's ribus if you're going to pay the money now for a half an hour and you're going to collect in two months the size of an hour. Looks like you're getting a benefit because you lent the person money. You gave him money, access to your money for two months before you received the actual merchandise.
And Kaman, who holds that? Kihai Tanya, like the following Tanya. Tanya, we learned, Ahoy Lechlach Lebez Isa. Someone's going to milk his goats. The Lechlach Lebez Isa. We're going to share the wool of his sheep. Bolir Dei says, Kibrasa, you're going to move the honeycombs. And because they're attached to the walls of the comb, it's like the deer, you have to peel it off. Like by an oven, they used to peel off the bread. Right, it's a pass. Mitzoy Chavay, his friend found him. Bamla said to him, Ma'ashi, easy, choy with mochlach. And they said, you know what? The farmer said, I'm going to sell you the milk that my cow eventually is going to make. Or, um, or, um, what my sheep is going to share eventually is uh, I'm selling to you right now. So it's not really here right now yet. Um, but it's on the sheep and you're going to uh, share it. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you then, mutter is permitted. Why? Because you're sort of taking a risk. You don't know if it will increase, you know if it will decrease. And therefore it's all, it's all permitted. <clears throat> However, um, because the guy sort of said, well, let's say, it turns out to be there's, there's very little milk that comes out. So even though it turns out to be to be more than a milk, it's not really considered. It tastes the ads because generally it's only a couple of days. He's talking about he's ready to go into milk. So even the even price will fill anything else or more milk is not going to be that great. It's a short, it's a, it's a very short space of time. <clears throat> So there's no real aganat over here, the use of the money, because there's very there's very short time here, not much use for money. <clears throat> and also because he took the risk upon himself. However, easy that my goat is going to um is going to go uh, give milk to such a certain amount. sold to you. And what my sheep will share, I'll give you. And you say, you mentioned the quantity, but I'm going to charge you less because you're prepaying, you're paying me now. So therefore, why am I getting less? Because I'm giving you use of the money. Here already, there's a case of ribas. It's forbidden. I, it's forbidden. Why? Because you gave a discount and, uh, and, and, and the, the milk increases and you already fixed a certain amount. And therefore you gave him a discount and you're getting more than what I paid for. It is ribus. It's even though there's no intervention. It's part of the milk just comes out. <clears throat> and keeping the lesson, he shy to us. And the fact is that at this moment that he's not present yet, therefore it's as if it's not here, and it'll only increase later on, and that is um, considered ribis. I, there's nothing the guy does. Whatever I look that day, whatever the cow decides to produce, or whatever the you know wool that will be in a few days' time from now, will be maybe even more than today. Nevertheless, it's considered ribis. So we see that even though there's no intervention in your part, if it's more than what he paid for, that's ribis. That's one version. There's another version that makes a, a, a distinction between the case of what he's talking about milking the cow or shearing the wool, and the case of the gourds, which will grow in size, and why should it be different? Amar Rabbi Zerubbabel, he could have me. Amar Rabbi Zerubbabel says, "Keep the male lekara because it happens by itself. Shaped dummy, it is good." I but Tanya, we learn kach v'kach aser. We learn clearly in the Mishnah here that it's it's aser if I prepay and I'm getting a discount. It's a big difference. Why? <clears throat> The milk that you're getting tomorrow is not here today when we're talking about it. It's new milk. And therefore, you cannot say the milk that we talked about just increased naturally. It's new milk, and therefore, it's his ribis. The milk is gone, and there's something else. The hair is new hair. The very gourd that you had is growing. When you take away this gourd, it's not the same thing. It's it's a different gourd that will come out in this place. So therefore, it's as if it's present right now, and there's no difference. Even though it's smaller right now, it'll get bigger later. Here, take these four zuzi on this barrel of wine, and I'll take upon and I'll take upon myself any losses. Or um, sorry, he says there are two possibilities here. One is the price of volatility, another is the quality. And he says, the quality gets ruined, it's on you on your head. But if price volatility, I take upon myself. So it says about it, because I took upon myself price volatility, it could be, in fact, I'm overpaid by the time I collect it. It's more like a business deal than a loan with interest. And therefore, it's permitted. Even though when it comes to the quality, I said it's on your head. So he says it. If, if it turns sour, it's on your head. But price will tell you up and down his mind. And, and therefore, he advised that it's permitted. Why is it permitted? Because I took upon myself it's the risk. It's a sale. But the fact is, 
Mashabi says Kabai, but the fact is when it comes to the fault, he <clears throat> he did not take it myself. How come was Khabar Ochla? So is this a case of where there's a much more chance of profit than of loss, which sounds like Ribas? I'm like even the Makabla is Zila Zoila. So Abai said because he took upon himself price will fill the it could be the price will go down, could be a kid and cure a loss. Cardinal says that was considered taking a full risk, and that is a business deal. Next mission. Um, if I lend money to my friend, I should not sit in that chatzim. I should not sit in the chatzim. Um, you know, if, I, if Reuben lent money to Shimon, Shimon shouldn't squat in Reuben's property. Why? Because he's getting a benefit. Rebus. Nor should he pay less rent than the going rate. Because that is considered rebus. And why are you getting a lower rate? Because I lent you money. Said the Gemara, we had a concept of a comma as follows: a squatter. But if the if the owner of that property never rents it out, so he doesn't lose out. Even if the person who's moving in is a Zen Nana, normally I pay rent now. I'm getting away with it. Zen Nana, the the thing is that I don't have to pay you. But if I'm there already, I don't have to pay you. If Zen Loyna, I can live. I have my own house. I just have to move in there. It's even a step less reason why I should be paying you. But what about when it comes to ribis? If I'm a squatter, I don't gain, and, and, or at least you don't lose anything. Because is, is it permitted, or do we say it's still like you're paying me interest? live in somebody else's courtyard without their permission. Ain't it sort of you don't have to pay him any money because they're like But he'll pay you if 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 Shimon lent money to Reuben, and then the Dovich had said he squats in in Reuben's land, even though Reuben would never have rented out. Anyway, so it's not really giving anything to Shimon. Nevertheless, Shimon must pay money <clears throat> because it looks like it is, or maybe it isn't. So we'll see. If somebody lends his friend money, he shouldn't live in his courtyard without paying. You should pay less if nature who Ribas is Ribas. As the Gemara, in my sister, for me, for the Mishnah, I would have thought it's talking about a case where the person does rent it out, and I do rent. So Zen I'm getting something substantial, and you're paying me. That's an abuse. But if you wouldn't have rented it out, so it costs you nothing, as if you're giving me nothing. Maybe that's permitted, and that's a Nachmas Chiddush. And Nachmas goes a step further. Even if the person himself is not even benefiting, even if the lender is not benefiting, not only the the, the borrower is not paying anything, the lender is not benefiting because he normally he has his own house. Nevertheless, because he lent Shimon lent money to Reuben, he shouldn't be squatting. It appears like Ribas. This isn't Ribas, but it appears like Ribas. He must say that I don't know how the kind of lager on your chutz that normally rents out. We got the double the maker person that normally pays rent. I have a chutz that the kind of lager, but a chutz that is not meant to be rented out. The guy who loves the maker, a person that does not normally pay rent. A Malloy, maybe not. Kamash Malon comes to teach you that no, it appears like Ribas. Even though it, was, it wasn't conditional, it wasn't organized, it doesn't matter. It looks like Ribas. But the Ikadam, the other version is only we was part of the arrangement of the loan, that I will be able to squat in your property. I'm going to basically hear me. I'm going to have nothing. 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 But if he says, I'll lend me money, but then say, as a result of that, I will allow you to live my chutz. So even in a case where there's no benefit to either one because he normally doesn't rent and you normally have you have your own house, nevertheless, sort of allow us to pay. Why? Because it's conditional. This is ribs. Man, I'm not he'll value the one that said that even in a case where he lent him, then the following day says, look, I'm squatting, or he squatted. In other words, it was totally unrelated to the loan. Nevertheless, it's forbidden because it appears like he was like, oh, surely he said, lend me. As part of the arrangement. Only if he said, lend, lend me money and I'll squat. Then I will tell you, in the case where it was totally unrelated, Monday we lent me money, on Wednesday decided the guy decided to squat, then it's permitted. My time of keeping the Mikado, I would die to the Hoche Ois for less than one. Because the loan was not contingent on this, it doesn't matter. This is the famous Abiyasa that we always have Shas, that we rub it by his teacher. And in fact, he had a son and he called him brother, like his favorite students. So this Rabbi Yisrael Bacham talk if face already wants to know. So how in the world can you ever do any favor or lend anything if you want if you want to lend me money that the borrower can never have anything to do with the lender? And we'll discuss in the end of the period about even saying Shabbat Aleichem if you don't normally do. So how's it work? So face the one answer is these are things which everybody can see, and that's why it appears like business. But if it's a private discretion and it's something that normally we're friends and you normally lend it to me, then no problem of business. In this case, or another reason is because I'm doing it without permission, it looks like why did I, why was I brazen enough to move into your property of permission? Because I know if I lent you money, you wouldn't have the chutzpah to chase me out. 
So therefore, it looks like ribbit. But in an ordinary case where I come and borrow things from you, even though I, le- I lend you money, there's no problem whatsoever, as long as you generally would borrow lend it to me. Habib Muhammad Takif, of the, the Inche, he would grab a hold of the Abad in the servants of a person, the Masi, but who owed him money. <clears throat> this is a servant who was just loitering, he wasn't really doing anything. So he took him and said, here, I want your service for me. Baba Bia did the service. Amalai Rabbi Bere, his Rabbi's son said to him, my Tamar Mokha, what are you doing? Amalai Anok Rab Nachman, so I'm like a Nachman, Rab Nachman, Abda, Nuhum Krisay, Loi Shavi. We learned already that, that um, Rab Nachman said, that an evid sometimes in getting Rabbi Beza, that an evid sometimes is not even worth the, the food you give him because he's worthless. So therefore, I'm not gaining anything. In fact, it's costing me money having this evid serve me. All he did was he was a clown. He used to dance in the bars to have a drink. But ordinary servants, me, Amr, did we say that? Of course, they, they're, they're, they're productive. I heard like he said, I take him after so if you grab a hold of the ever dear friend. And you do unless he's loitering about, then you grab a hold of hey, look, work for me. Potter, you are potter because the guy is actually very happy that you you're working is ever productive. I don't want ever to be loitering and then he'll get used to his ID. He doesn't have to work. Put good, put him to work, let him be productive. So therefore, I'm I'm not I'm I'm actually helping out the the, the bar in this case. You know when the rubber son said, you know he could do that when there's no loan between you. So then you have a good cheshbon. I can take his servant without even knowing about it. I'm sure he's happy. Because he lent This really the optics are terrible. Looks like you are lending with interest. Based on what we just learned, that even though and this is the first opinion that we learned, that even though totally unrelated, the fact that it looks like I'm squatting on your property because you and because I lent you money, it's already forbidden. Even though I have no benefit from it and Neither do you, uh, and, and you're not losing anything. Shleim died if I squat, ain't it sort of how to the pain? But um, um <clears throat> sorry, um, yeah. But he'll pay you. It was contingent on the loan. The dovek then you lend the loan, and and, they, and part of the guarantee was you lend my chutzah. Sort of the house where you have to pay. So the um, so therefore we say that that um, only if it's um. <clears throat> So sorry, even even though Nachman said generally, Zen and the Zelakhasa you are part of, but in this case, he'll they you the Khsaida. If he happens to lend you money and separately you decide to squat, totally unrelated. But the optics are no good, you have to pay for it. Otherwise, it looks like it same thing over here, using the servant, all fine and good, but because you lend the money, it looks like it is. Um later, as I said to him, how the bees, the number of times where he had the Rabbi to change his mind. Somebody lends, uh, let's say he owes money of Rebus to his friend. And we learned before that Allah is not a Allah is a whole that you extracted from him forcibly by the Bezin because and at that time he owed him a Zuz and he said, you know, I'll give you four bushels a week because that's the price of a Zuz. But then he threw in an extra, an extra Griba, an extra bushel because the and actually I gave him an extra one gratis. Now, this extra one is not really part of the ribas. So when the bezin comes and extracts from him the ribas, what about the fifth one, which is not really part of the ribas? Sabai says, take away the four bushels, but the fifth one is just, you know, he, was, he decided to give you a discount for no reason. It's not part of the ribas. But Obelis agrees, because the only reason why he gave it to you is an outgrowth of the ribas is considered as ribas. Five, he came in as ribas. And therefore, we take all five out. Similarly, you owe for, let's say, Zuzim of Rebus to your friend. We have like going to give him a shirt. And he gave him a shirt in this in exchange of the four Zuzim. He's Kimafki, many of the business steps in and takes it back. Can they take those four dollars cash or they must take that shirt back? It's the same amount of money, but he was given a shirt as interest. Says Abaya, four dollars enough. Gleam of Kimmy, not to necessarily take out, take back the shirt. Robert says, no, Gleam of Kimmy, we take back that very shirt. You know, my time, you know why? People should say, Gleam of the Mechasa, the Koi, Gleam of the Risu. People should walk around saying, ha, taunting him, this shirt is Ribus. And people say, oh, he could do it. Why can't I charge you this? $12, let's say, as it and then he went ahead, the lender went ahead, and he was owed $12 by, by the borrower, and he went ahead, he moved into his house, which the rent was $10, and he said, you know what, the rent is $10, take it off from the Ribas you owe me, and you know better, I'll, I'll, let's make believe it's 12 and you owe me nothing. And he, he rented it for 12. Came off him and now Bezel come and take away the money. So, you know, the $10 you owe the rent. Give it back to him, pay him real money. Is then, um, today, some of will take 12 back. 
Ah, he, the, this extra two is not part of the Ibis, but he threw it. Let, let him say, what are you talking about? Why in the world should I um, pay, consider the tire 12 as if I gave him 12? I'm giving you 10. I was just nice enough not to charge him lecture two. So what are you taking away from me? So he said to him, you know why? He said, why can't you say to him, since I'm making all this money and everything else, is therefore I was Michael. But Hashville and Mishtash, now I'm not getting any of the Rebus money. Why should I even actually, all I got was 10, and you want me to pay 12? I didn't get 12 from him, I got 10 from him. But um, because I could argue, I'm no different than anybody else. They would pay 10, I'm paying 10. So take away $10 from me. Why take away 12? Just because I said I'm going to be Michael, the other two, and consider it all part of the rent. Because he said to him, You accepted it as if the full 12 is part of the rent, and therefore we will collect back. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.